and Detroit Lions left the uh, 2024 draft without drafting a wide receiver, which people thought it was a position of need. Check out Detroit Lions top playlist, thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Obviously, you still got free agency. You still got uh, post June first cuts. So you still still got some options out there. Um, I shake this shit up. So you still you still got some options out there, man. But uh, that mean they going all in on two people. Diamond Peoples Jones and Jameson Williams. Now people say, well, they just signed St. Brown. The problem is they don't have any a, a dominant outside receiver. And the two guys they banking on on the outside, the issue with Diamond Peoples Jones is durability. It's always been an issue since he left Michigan. And with Jameson Williams, it's durability, consistency, and you know, getting off press coverage. Winning on the outside, see, you know, with the Lions receivers right now, the the issue is uh, you come you came out there, Granny, you came way out there. The issue is, is there's nobody on the roster that can win outside one on one consistency. Consistency. That's one thing you kind of want to see St. Brown do is be is play the outside like a number a true number one. Right now, he one of those guys. Where uh, you know you move him around, you know he can, you know you move him around for matchups, and they do it with Justin Jefferson, Tyreek Hill, a little bit with Jamar Chase. But you want to see him be the guy on the outside. That's you want to see him be the guy on the outside. Him be the one on the outside. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to get this stuff over here and it won't melt. It won't get in my shaker bottle. Get in there. So, you know that's the one thing in Jameson. You know a lot of their receivers. Don't forget Antoine Green, too. A lot of their receivers can't win on the outside. And that's the issue they got. So now, you know, you got, you know, that's why you seen them go to Laporta and Brown so much over the middle last year. And, you know, Josh Reynolds occasionally on the outside. So they need somebody that's going to win on the outside, beat press coverage, you know, beat the coverage out there. That's why you've seen a lot of people. That's why you've seen a lot of people go out there and say, well, we want to see them go get Mike Evans or, you know, somebody like that. Somebody that can win on the outside. Now, the thing about it is, Diamond Peoples Jones is in what? It's mid twenties. J Mo, early mid twenties. So Antoine Green is young. I mean, bro, don't forget the practice squad kid, that Dylan guy you got on from Eastern Michigan. So you got a lot of guys that's gonna continue to get better. You know, and it's one of those positions where the development is fairly quick. So they gonna continue to get better, and I think you know they banking on one or two of those guys. Or say Brown growing into be that number one guy on the outside. So, and before you say size, you know, Deshaun Watson did it. You know, Marvin Harrison did it on the outside. It's a number of guys that wasn't particularly big that was really good. Steve Smith, really good outside receiver. So a lot of times with the Lions receivers, they got to bunch them. They got to uh, move them around. You know what I'm saying? They got to move them around to get free releases. They got a scheme to get them free. A guy like, you know, Randy Moss and Terrell Owens, you know, hey, I can send them out there. They're going to outrun the coverage. They're going to beat the coverage. You you know what they're going to do. So, you know, so they're looking for that guy. And, you know, you know, you go, what would J-Mo got to do to beat press coverage? Get stronger, know how to get free releases, get better releases. You know, right now, it seems like he's running routes better. Like, he, you know, his run after the catch. And I don't just mean, like, catching and running. I mean, like, when he get the ball... Him and St. Brown is like, they remind me of Golden Tate when they get the ball. They turn into running back. So, you know, but I think, to be honest, Diamond Peoples Jones has got all the makeup, if he can stay healthy, to be that guy. A really good outside receiver. He got the physical makeup, the strength. You know, he got the size. Go up there and go get it. That's what I see in him. You know, but uh, but they they putting a lot of faith in uh, Diamond Peoples Jones, J Mo, Antoine Green, and any other younger receivers out there. Even we talk about uh, St. Brown. So I look forward to it, to be honest. So 
And they still go to OBJ because they bring back DJ Shark. Yeah, I think it's more uh, unlikely they go get somebody else. So, do I see a big, a big problem? Them not filling Josh Reynolds? It could be because he was a great chain mover on first down. So, they could miss that Josh Reynolds. You know, I know people got on for the drops or whatever like that, but. You know, then he issued a statement and said that people really weren't tripping about the drops like that. Like, he loved the city and all that. But, dude, he didn't even catch hell as much as Ebron did. Ebron had drops that we, you know, games that didn't even matter. That's the crazy thing. So, if he got sensitive about, about the fans and those drops, um, yeah, he had his rabbit-ass mind. That was, that was nothing. That was absolute nothing. That little that little bullshit he had. Nobody was really fucking with him. Eron caught hell. <laughs> I think even DeAndre Swift caught more hell for that drop he had. Uh, that drop he had in the first game versus Chicago that lost us the game at home some years ago. Even he caught more hell. <laughs> but we'll see, man. But I think hey, you you find all this these young talented guys. Green, what's the Dylan dude? What's his name? Dylan from uh, Eastern Michigan. That was on the practice squad. You you sign all these young guys, the uh, Diamond Peoples Jones, Jameson Williams, and you bank on them developing. But the thing about you know being late on like offensive player positions, all of them. The thing about you you don't want to be like see defensively. You say well go get the pass rusher. You got one job. Go get the pass rusher. Play corner. It only some you know yeah it's a little bit of camaraderie there. You know, knowing you know the cover, the coverages are the same. The the language language is different. Cover three, cover two, cover four, man to man. You get the flats. You know, it's easier to jail. You a defensive tackle, just be gap discipline. You know, eat this. You know, you just eat this space up. But you talking about you know rapport with the uh, offensive line, rapport with the quarterback. You don't want to be you know late getting a receiver. You don't want to be like getting a receiver, getting tight ends, getting offensive linemen, getting running backs. You don't you don't want to be a day late, a dollar short on that. You wanna you wanna make sure you get as many of these guys as early as you can to form a rapport with your quarterback. I ain't gonna lie, when I seen them move up the first time, I thought they was getting Jerry Rice son. So they feel and, and to and be honest, unless they felt like they had a prospect that was gonna be a uh, that was gonna be like a uh, uh, St. Brown, you know. Why why go get Brendan Rice or, you know, the kid out of Texas where you know uh, the coach GM Chris Ballard, like he went to bat for him and talking about he had bad interviews. Look here, I don't read too much into the interview process about these players, and I think a lot of times a lot of these teams get turned off by the interview process. Most of these guys ain't never had a job, and if they had work study, you don't really interview for work study. So most of these guys ain't never had a job, never filled out a job application. Never had interview etiquette. I didn't had all that. My mom was dreaming of interview etiquette. I had etiquette classes. You know what I'm saying? So I understood how to fill out a job application. I was drilled on in practice how to how to win a job, you know, interview even before, you know, you get into the question phase. You know, how to answer what's your weaknesses, how to answer what your strengths is, how to fill out the availability, how to you know, I was groomed for that shit. You know what I'm saying? Most of these guys ain't never had to be groomed for that. So as long as I don't see red flags as far as family members and as far as, you know, things, you know, failed drug tests, things that's did off the, off the field, then I'm cool. You know, you know, part of they, these coaches' job is to be a life mentor, too. It's to help groom these young guys become, to become men. So, but yeah, I don't think it's a problem. I think, you know, you wait, you get to, you still was going to get a receiver where you had to groom them. If it wasn't neighbors. If it wasn't uh, Romeo Duzier, uh, if it wasn't a uh, shout out to the Bears for getting him, I know they happy. Um, whole ass Chicago Care Bears and uh, or Marvin Harrison Jr. You know it was gonna be a learning curve, but sometimes that learning curve can get picked up like that for the receivers. But I don't read too much into it, man. What I read into the Lions not going out there and, and getting a top receiver. What I read into it is a. Uh, they believe in their young talent. It's a lot on JMO play if they don't bring nobody else in, and it's a lot on Diving People's Jones play. But the crazy thing about putting so much stock in Antoine Green, you know, in the practice squad receivers, the thing about putting a lot of stock into those brothers, 
is that the two I named first, J-Mo and, Do and Donovan Peoples-Jones, they always injured. It's always an injury there. That's my problem with it. And this is why I was trying to explain to people last year why they should have got DeAndre Hopkins. You know, they probably would have won the Super Bowl if they kept Hopkins with DJ Shark. And they just, I don't know, DJ Shark probably just, just rubbed people the wrong way. That's what I'm just starting to think. He may not be a great locker room guy. You know. But, um. But, you know. That's just my opinion on it. But, you know. Other than that, uh. What's so funny? These women be like, they don't need no man. <laughs> I laugh every time I see I see that, that, that statement proven wrong. She trying to, she need a man to help her get her TV to her car. <laughs> oh man, she need a man to help her get this TV in this car. They be just, ugh. These women be lying, bro. I'm watching this man help her get her TV in this car, man. Girl, tell me she don't need no man. I be skating on there. All right, bye. You gonna do me like that? Absolutely. Make make them make them eat their words, fellas. Make them eat their words. But um, thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. And another thing, we say this real quick. Maybe all Detroit players can can relate. Why do they with some women wear these tights? They wear these leggings, and then they put the hoodie to cover their ass up. How about you put on some regular pair of pants, or you put on a shirt to cover your ass? I don't understand that. If you don't want to show your ass off, don't show. Don't wear those pants. I just don't understand women, dude. But hey, it's got Detroit Lions top playlist. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. That subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notifications. Increase your chance to get notifications. We go live or drop video. Financially, hit the link tree. Find me everywhere there. Peace.